So, in this video, I'm going to do a step-by-step -step build of this circuit onto the breadboard. This video is intended more for people not used to building circuits on the breadboard, especially if they're looking at a schematic. So to begin with, I'm going to start with really the uh, simplest part of the circuit. It's the easiest to understand. So, right here in the schematic is our output. The LED just happens to be the load. We could put something else for the LED. But the LED is nice in a demonstration circuit because you can tell when the output is on, the LED will be on. You'll see the light. When the output's off, the LED will be off. There won't be light. So now I moved the resistor so we could get a better look at uh, the diode here, our load. So the cathode here, this is the short lead of the LED, as you can see here. It has a short lead and a long lead. So diodes are polarized. You have to put them in the right direction in the circuit. If we put this in backwards, it'll block current, and it, it won't light up no matter what we do. So we want uh, the long lead away from ground, the short lead towards ground. So we have the short lead connected to this row that goes right to the negative rail. Ground is the negative side of a battery in most uh, DC circuits. And now that brings us back to this resistor here. So this resistor connects the anode, the long lead of the LED, to the positive side of the power source. In this case it's going to be a 9 volt battery. So all we have to do is uh, put it right there. It doesn't matter which direction you put the resistor in. Current flows through it the same either way. But uh, here you can see now we have positive resistor LED ground the negative side of the battery. You can see that path here. Now the reason why I set them here and in this direction you notice the direction is kind of going instead of uh, positive down to negative like the schematic it's uh, going negative down to positive. That's because we're going to put the transistor in these three rows here. So that'll make up three rows there. And we want the collector, this part of the transistor, up more towards the positive side. It's easier to position these two components in a breadboard than a transistor. A uh, transistor really needs three rows right next to each other. So it goes where it's easiest to put it and the other components uh, adjust to that. So now we're going to jump to the opposite end of the circuit to the input. So for our input, how we're going to adjust voltage coming in, we're going to use a trim pot. And a trim pot's a great way to uh, set a voltage in a circuit. So we connect two ends of the trim pot to directly to the battery. Since we're going to use a 9 volt battery, it's going to give us about 9 volts across these two areas. This terminal represents this arrow here. We can pick anywhere along this resistive path either closer to the positive side of the battery or closer to the negative side of the battery to get a fraction of its voltage. We can get anywhere pr from 100% uh, of the voltage, about 9 volts, to about 0% of the voltage of the battery, about 0 volts. So now there's a couple other things I need to say about the trim pot. I'm using a 5 kilo ohm trim pot. So there's 5,000 total ohms of resistance across this terminal and this terminal. The wiper selects an area of there. That's how we get a variable resistance. But in any case, uh, one of the reasons why I mentioned this component early in the video is because this is actually the first component I place. I leave this component in this spot. The terminals here are slightly bigger than leads and wires that I put in the board. So I stretched out the connection points under there a little bit. They snap in fairly easy, but they, they stretch the connectors a bit. So if I pop this out and try to put other uh, components with smaller leads in there, they might not make a good connection. So this is it pretty much its permanent spot. And so the rest of the circuit, I'm just building in this area to work with this trim pot. And as I said, it's a 5 kilo ohm trim pot. The value of the trim pot doesn't matter too much. Uh, you'll just get you know less current the higher the value, the resistor. The main point is we're getting a voltage. And that depends on how far the wiper is from positive to negative. And the uh, value of resistance doesn't really matter when it comes to getting a voltage out of here. It's just its location between positive and negative. And that brings us to the heart of this circuit. That's two of these transistors. These are 2N22 
two two transistors as you can see there transistors that start with 2N such as a 2N2222 I believe I'll have this pin layout where looking at the flat side the left pin is the emitter the middle pin is the base and the right pin is the collector and so when you're looking at the schematic the arrow is the emitter this part is the base and this part is the collector this is an NPN type transistor the 2N2222 there's a lot of other NPN type transistors uh, probably any one of them will work in this circuit so use them if you don't have the 2N2222 but right now I have the flat edge pointed towards us so this is emitter base collector and we want the collector connected where the resistor and the LED are so you can see we got that there and now these two jumpers they connect uh, the base here and the emitter over here to our next transistor that brings us to the other transistor so same schematic symbol for an NPN transistor now we know it's NPN because the arrow is pointing outwards if there is an arrow pointing inwards and it would probably be up here but it doesn't matter where it is if there's an arrow pointing inwards that's a PNP transistor so you gotta look at these arrows to understand first off the arrow means it's the emitter and then the direction of the arrow tells you if it's NPN or PNP so this is NPN so the arrow's pointing out NPN can be thought of as never pointing in but in any case this also is a 2N2222 an NPN so we're gonna wire the arrow there to the same row is the emitter of the other transistor that's this jumper there and then the collector we're gonna put to the middle pin of this transistor the base so I already have the jumpers there to help guide me into my positioning and there we go now we have this transistor inserted so now to finish wiring this circuit other than applying power we need these two resistors so let's do this resistor first this connects the output of the trim pot which is the input for the circuit to the uh, base of this transistor the middle pin so we can just plug that right in and there you should be able to see it's at the middle pin there and uh, also the output there so now we need to power this transistor that's what this resistor is for you see it comes from the positive rail to the collector of this uh, transistor which is also the base of that transistor so take uh, another 470 ohm resistor and just plug it from the positive rail directly to the collector of this transistor and again the value of these resistors 470 ohms is to protect from a 9 volt power source uh, the resistance can be different you can use a higher value resistance you can go thousands of ohms and uh, the circuit will work just fine one more thing to mention is that I have a couple uh, wires I made to connect the negative rail from one power strip to the negative rail of the other one and the positive rail to the other positive rail so that when I apply the battery to one of these rails the other side has power also. And now it's time to test out the circuit. I put the battery in the breadboard. This is a newer battery. It's above 9 volts. It's powering the rail which as I showed earlier powers the other rail. And I used alligator clips to connect the multimeter probes. The right one comes to the uh, input area, the output of the voltage divider. You can see right now it's below zero volts. The, uh, the black probe I got connected to the negative power rail so we can get the voltage difference and see what the voltage of the output is. So to begin with we're going to turn it up and you'll notice we got to get about uh, 8.5, uh, not 8.5, but 0.85 in that range volts before the LED will turn on. There you can see it turned on and it's it's about uh, 0.86 volts, less than a volt. Now when I turn it down a little bit, it turns off. And then I got to turn it up a little bit before it turns on. So we have a little space between on and off. Once it turns off, you got to turn it up a bit before it will turn on. And once it's on, you got to turn it down a bit before it'll turn off. We have a little kind of a buffer area. That's called hysteresis. That's one thing you want in the Schmidt trigger. You get nice clean on and offs. And uh, looks like we need probably about a uh, 
one hundredth of a volt difference before it flips. So not not big on this particular setup, but uh, as I showed before, you can turn it all the way down; it'll stay off. Once it turns on, we hit that point. There's enough voltage to turn it on. You can keep increasing the voltage; it stays on. It's completely on, no matter what the voltage is, as long as it's high enough. Right now, it's up all the way. Even though this battery is above 9 volts, we're getting an 8.3 volt reading here. But in any case, that's the Schmidt trigger for you. That's the nice thing about this. We can take a varying uh, voltage here, and just at a certain point, it either turns the output on or off. And there's a little safety zone in there, hysteresis, to prevent uh, false triggering and uh, like sputtering and stuff. So now quickly before I go, I just want to remind you when you're done with this circuit, remove the battery. I made that mistake a couple of days ago and I drained uh, a fairly new battery. When this LED is off, if you notice it's wired to pretty much always be on. So the reason why it turns off is because this transistor steals the current. Once this transistor gets turned on, then the current flows through the transistor instead of the LED. It has an easier path when the transistor is on. So, uh, we already got current flowing through there. Current can also always flow this way. Uh, current can always flow this way. And current always flows through the trim pot. So even if the circuit looks off, it's still passing current. So make sure you remove the battery. Otherwise, the battery will uh, drain. And you might even have a dead battery uh, when you come back to it. 